I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is the Word Before Work. Today we're reading from Genesis 1, verses 26 and 28. Here's what it says. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Again, that was Genesis 1, verses 26 and 28. After the first six days of creation, the earth was still largely empty. As I say in my new children's book, The Creator and You, while in six days God created a lot, there are so many things that he simply did not, like bridges and baseballs, sandcastles and s'mores God asked us to create and fill the planet with more. That's what we see in today's passage. God never intended for Eden to remain a garden. He commissioned human beings to rule the garden, to fill the earth and subdue it, to work the garden and turn it into something much, much more. There's a beautiful detail in the second chapter of scripture that helps make this clear. Genesis 2, 10 through 12 says, quote, Now a river flows from Eden to water the orchard, and from there it divides into four head streams. The name of the first is Pishon. It runs through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is pure. Pearls and lapis lazuli are also there, end quote. Now, I think we all know what gold and pearls are, but for those of us, present company included, who are not geologists, what in the world are lapis lazuli? Well, if you Google it, you'll see that it is a beautiful blue precious stone. Hang on a minute. Gold, pearls, precious stones. Where have we seen this before? in the opposite bookend of scripture, in the second to last chapter of Revelation, where John describes the new Jerusalem as having streets of gold, gates made of pearls, and walls decorated with every kind of precious stone. See Revelation 21, 18 through 21. You see it, right? This is God's poetic way of telling us that the command to fill the earth was the command to turn the garden into a garden city. In the words of John Mark Comer, creation was a project, not a product. And of course, we see this reaffirmed powerfully when Jesus spent the majority of his adulthood not preaching, but working as a carpenter to fill the earth with tables and chairs. What does all this mean for you and me today? It means That if our work is good work, if it helps cultivate a world where creation and its creatures flourish as God intended, then we are free from needing to justify our jobs. We work and create and rule and fill and subdue simply because it's what God made us to do. It's who we are as his image bearers. And that is enough. So go and do the God-ordained filling of this earth with freedom and joy today. Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at twbwfoundations.com. These email devotionals, are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity, and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today. Sign up right now, again, totally free at twbwfoundations.com.